What would you do to limit that the power of the FBI and the CIA and deep state agencies elsewhere and bureaucratic bodies that for, throughout the COVID pandemic period behaved atrociously? What would you do to limit that power? And if you have time uh, to comment on the particular case, the Newberg Four, I'd be interested in how, what you think about that and how it pertains to January 6th. Was January 6th an insurrection or was January 6th an FBI construction? So listen, <clears throat> I think you just scratched the surface. This is just part of a broader pattern. I'm going to answer your question. Before I do, I want people to know this is not a partisan answer. And the reason I'll tell you it's not a partisan answer is every, the examples you gave, Russell, are solid examples grounded in appropriate skepticism and fact. But they will say, no, no, that's just conservative grievance. So let me just give you even further back. The same FBI that will not tell us how many field agents, likely hundreds, if I have to guess, were on the ground on January 6th, is the same FBI that lied to us directly to the face of the people about what happened on 9-11. You think this is, this is third rail stuff. Probably YouTube wouldn't allow this either. <clears throat> but this is hard fact. Look at quietly declassified documents in 2021. The FBI and the 9-11 Commission said that the 42-year-old graduate student from Saudi Arabia who suspiciously welcomed at the airport two of the hijackers and terrorists who claimed that he just met them randomly at the airport, the, the most ridiculous story on earth, the FBI 9-11 Commission said, no, 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 that's actual fact. Quietly declassified documents a year and two years ago now say, well, actually, that guy was a Saudi intelligence agent. 20 years later, they systematically lie. Same FBI that went back and incorrectly collected illicit tapes about Martin Luther King Jr. threatened him to commit suicide on the back of releasing those tapes. So why do I bring up those examples? Because those used to be so-called left-wing conspiracy theories that we now know to be true. What you raised today are so-called right-wing conspiracy theories. But this goes beyond partisanship. It is still the J. Edgar Hoover building of the FBI that people walk into. And I don't spout off on stuff just because I read it on the internet, okay? I'd encourage everybody to read a book that my wife and I are reading now. G-Man stands for Government Man. It's a Pulitzer Prize winning book about the history of this institution, about the history of J. Edgar Hoover. This is a corrupt institution. This is an institution that creates the very sources of crime that they combat or claim to want to combat. So here's what I'll do. There are other people in this race, you've talked to some of them, I gather, who will make sort of false promises of, we'll reform it, I'll fire Christopher Ray. They don't think they're making a false promise. They're good people, they're patriots, they mean well. They want incremental reform. You cannot incrementally reform these agencies. So you wanna know what the right answer is? You have to shut them down. And I will absolutely, on day one in the office, shut down the FBI. We don't need it. I've also offered unprecedented detail of exactly how we will shut down that FBI. I've offered unprecedented detail on the legal authority that who would have ever thought the president of the United States who runs the executive branch of the government can actually run the executive branch of the government. Radical idea. Turns out it's grounded in the law and the Constitution. I've also laid out the exact plan. I don't want people to suffer for risk of drugs or child trafficking. The 20, there's 35,000 employees in the FBI. 20,000 of them are not on the front lines. They sit in the J. Edgar Hoover building at the FBI. That's where the political rot begins. Those people will have to go home and find honest work in the private sector. The 15,000 or so agents who are on the front lines, we will redeploy them at the U.S. Marshals, a separate agency that has not yet been corrupted. They've been very good at child sex trafficking cases in bringing those much more effectively than the FBI has. Put them there. Put them in the Drug Enforcement Agency, which has been much more effective in fighting the fentanyl spread in this country. Put them in the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, tackling complex white collar crime and theft. So, so this is deeply practical, actually. The FBI, the, part of the point is it was redundant when it was created. It is redundant today. And when you have redundant bureaucracies, that's actually the formula for systematic corruption, which is exactly what we see. And Russell, I think that gets to the heart of the choice in this GOP primary. There is absolutely a choice that voters will have to make. Do they want incremental reform or do they want revolution? I stand on the side of revolution, the American revolution. If you want incremental reform, go with somebody else. If you want a quantum leap to revolution, that's what I'm actually bringing, not violent revolution 
but a revival of the ideals of the American Revolution. Yes, radical ideals that in 1776 gave birth to this nation. I stand for the radicalism of the American Revolution. And that's very different than the other candidates in this race.